Hello and welcome back to the same game tutorial part 6 and let's just jump straight back into it. So in the last part of the tutorial we successfully created a bunch of if statements to check in each direction if we have any possible matches and if we do we made sure to add these inside of the matches list and then we also printed out a few lines of text to say in which direction we have found the matches. In this part we are going to implement a way to delete all of the matches that we have put inside of the matches list and then shift around the icons that are left on the screen to fill the empty gaps. So the first thing we can do is to add some comments to each of these if statements so that we can better see in what direction they are supposed to be checking for matches in case we forget. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we can begin with creating a new comment above the first if statement and we're going to say match right and then we'll go above the next one and we'll say match down and then the next one, match, left, and then the last one, match, up. So now we can more easily see in what direction each of these if statements are checking. Then we can go ahead and remove these print statements as we no longer need them. Like so. So once our for loop has finished iterating through all of the matches inside of the matches list, we want to go ahead and call a function which we haven't created yet and this function is going to delete each of these matches inside of the icons list. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll make a few empty lines and then we'll go to the correct indentation which is in the same line as this for loop and then we're going to say delete matches which is what we're going to call the function and then we want to pass in the matches list as the parameter so we're going to write matches and now we can go ahead and create the actual function so we'll create a few empty lines and go inwards one indentation and then we're going to write def delete matches and inside of these brackets we'll add the parameter matches again and inside of this function, as I said before, we're going to create a for loop that iterates through the matches list and finds the corresponding icons inside of the icons list. So we're going to write for icon in matches and then inside of this for loop we are going to say icons list and then to get the right icon from the icons list we are going to use the index value from the icon inside of the matches list so we're going to write icon index and then we're going to say equals to none. So why aren't we just deleting each of the icons from the list instead of setting the values to none? Well that is because if we do that we are going to get an increasingly smaller icons list as each of the icons are being removed and this is going to cause us issues later on when we want to start to shift the icons around on the grid to fill the empty gaps. But if we set these to none instead, then the icons list will still be the same size, but each of the now deleted icons will have the value of none instead. But this is going to make a lot more sense later on. So now we have successfully created a function which is deleting all of the matches inside of the icons list, or rather setting these to the value of none. However, since we are setting these to the value of none, we are going to get some issues in some of the other functions, such as up here inside of our find matches function where we are trying to access some of these icons inside of the icons list to check what its icon type attribute value is set to and because a non value does not have these types of attributes that we have assigned to each of the icons we are going to get an error so in order to prevent this error from occurring we are going to check if this value is not none and then we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the if statements so we're going to copy this piece of code right here and then we're going to go up to the first if statement and we're going to say and and then we'll paste and then we'll say is not none. 
So now we're going to prevent a non-value attribute error from occurring when we get to this line of if statement if the value in the icons list at this index happens to be a non-value. And then we continue with the rest of the if statements. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll copy this piece of code here and then we'll say up here and is not none and then the same thing with this one here we'll copy this piece of code and then we'll say and is not none and then the last one as well now that we have that done we also have to check some other areas of our script to make sure that we don't get none value errors there as well so let's go up to the very top of the script first where we have this icons events function and inside of here we are iterating through the icons list so we also have to check if the current icon in the for loop does not have the value of none so we're going to create a new line under here and we're going to say if icon is not none and then we'll make sure that we indent this piece of code here and then we also have another part inside of our script where we have to check for a none value and that is inside of our same game screen where we are iterating through the icons list to place each of the grid cells as well as the icons and in this case we are going to wrap these two statements in the if statement so let's go ahead and do that now so we'll make a new line above and we're going to say if icon is not none and then we'll indent these two statements like so so now that we have that done there's another important thing that we need to think about before we can run the game and that is namely that we have two different lists that contains the icons one being the icons list and the other being the matches list and since we're only removing the icons that match instead of the icons list but not removing these from the matches list we're not going to see any changes occurring on the screen because the matches list is still keeping a reference to these icons so in order to make this work we are going to have to delete each of the matches instead of the matches list as well so we're going to go back into our delete matches function and in here we're going to create a new line and we're going to say icon dot destroy so now we're deleting the icons from the matches list as well as from the icons list so now that we have done that we also need a way to be able to refresh the screen so that we can observe the changes happening inside of the game and to do that we are going to use a function available to rempy called restart interaction so we're going to create a few empty lines and go to the correct indentation and then we're going to say rempy dot restart interaction like so and i will put a link to the documentation page where you can read more about this function on the next line we are also going to add another line of code which is going to redraw each of the icons inside of the icons list and this redraw method is available to the sprite manager object so we're going to write icons which is what we call the sprite manager object and then we're going to say redraw and inside of these brackets we are going to give it the amount of time that it should take until it automatically runs this redraw method again but because we don't want this functionality we're just going to put zero as the parameter to make it only run once so now we could save the changes that we have done to the code and run the game however before we do that I'd like to point out an error that I have made earlier on in the code which is going to prevent the game from running correctly and that is namely up here inside of the find matches function where I have created this condition which says icon index plus one modulus icon sparrow is not equal to zero and for this to work properly we need to encompass this expression with two brackets so let's do that now like this so now this expression is correct and the game should work correctly so now we can go ahead and save our changes and run the game so now that we are finally back inside of the game again we can go ahead and try to delete a bunch of matches that we can find on this grid and see what happens so i'm going to just start clicking on a group of matches like this 
and then let's try this one and this and this and here we can see that it seems to be working correctly but what if I were to click on a single icon such as this one for example it shouldn't be removing it from the grid now should it? Oops, well it seems like it does and that is because we haven't implemented a way yet to say to the find matches function that we don't want to call the delete matches function if the matches list is only one item big so we're going to go back into the code and implement this check so that it will work correctly so now we are going to go ahead and wrap this function call in an if statement and this if statement is going to check if the matches list has more than one item in it and if it does then we know that the game was able to find the matches around the icon that we clicked on and if it doesn't then it wasn't able to find any matches and the only icon that resides inside of the matches list is the one that we clicked on and we only want to run the delete matches function if the game were able to find any matches so we're going to go ahead and implement this if statement now so we'll go above the function call and then we'll say if len matches does not equal to one and then we'll make sure that we indent this line of code here like so so now we can go back into the game again and see if this works so now we want to try and click on a single icon somewhere on the grid that doesn't have any surrounding matches such as this one right here and here we can see that nothing happens which is exactly what we want but if we were to click on a group of matches, such as this right here, it should still be working as intended where they are removed from the grid. Like so. So now we know that the new code is working correctly. So let's head back to the code and continue where we left off. So now we have successfully created two different functions. One which is finding all the matches around the icon that we clicked on, and the other which is deleting these matches from the grid. But now we also need a way to shift the remaining icons on the screen to fill in the empty gaps. And we are going to call this function underneath the last line inside of our delete matches function. So we're going to write shift icons like so. And then we can go ahead and create this function. So we're going to create a few empty lines and then go into the correct indentation. And then we're going to write def shift icons like so and inside of this function we are going to create two different for loops one which is going to shift icons downwards and the other which is going to shift icons from right to left so the first for loop that we want to create is going to be the one that helps us to shift icons downwards and we are going to do this by iterating through the icons list in the reversed order and we are doing this just so that the shifting will actually occur in the correct way so we're going to write for icon in icons list and then we want to wrap this icons list in a python function called reversed so we're going to write reversed like so and then we also want to wrap it in a function called enumerate and this function is going to give us a value which is going to represent the current iteration of the for loop so we're going to write enumerate like so so now we have two functions which are applied to this icons list one is reversing it and the other is enumerating it and then we also have to give our for loop another variable which will contain this index value so we'll add a comma and then say i so now we have an index variable and an icon variable now there's only one problem with this for loop and that is namely that our index variable is going to start at the value of 0 and end at the value of 99 but because we have reversed the icons list we ideally want the index variable to start at the value of 99 and end in the value of 0 so in order to get this value we are going to create another variable inside of this for loop which is going to calculate this for us but unfortunately, we are going to have to do that in the next part as we are running out of time again. So I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.